The delivery of your child is a very personal one. There are so many things to consider, such as medications for pain, interventions, medical procedures, as well as your medical health and needs. Every mother will have her own story and situation. There is no right way for everyone. I do recommend that all parents do your homework about what medical interventions are going to be offered to you, what may be presented to you at the hospital in an emergency, as well as all newborn procedures. You may not know that the United States has one of the highest mortality rates for newborns and new moms. We shockingly have the second highest mortality rate for newborns. Forty countries rank better than the U.S. for maternal mortality rates in the developed world. Cesarean section rates ideally should be around 5 to 10 percent, as these numbers indicate the best outcomes for moms and babies. But in the U.S., they are at an all-time high of over 30 percent. Many new moms do not know that the use of interventions make a C-section more likely. A snowball effect often occurs, which leads to a surgical birth. You may start off with Pitocin since you are not progressing fast enough. Then they have a fetal monitor, and the Pitocin causes distress in the baby, and the next thing you know, your birth plan is out the window. There can be downsides to standard interventions that may seem like no big deal. Pitocin, cesarean sections, episiotomies, and fetal monitoring have become so commonplace that most women don't even think much about them. Let's find out a little bit more about each. Pitocin has become so common that it has been reported that 81% of women will receive this drug during labor. While you may be told that Pitocin is just the same chemical your body makes during labor, what you may not be told is that Pitocin is, in fact, a drug. It is a liquid medication that is a synthetic form of the naturally occurring hormone oxytocin. It is given to women who are induced, after delivery, if you are hemorrhaging, and for more concerning reasons, such as failure to progress and to speed up labor. It is not without risks, as you may be led to believe. The risks involved are uterine rupture, dropping of blood pressure, and cutting off oxygen supply to the baby by compressing the umbilical cord. Just because it is so commonly used does not mean it is necessary or right for you and your birth. It can literally be a lifesaver for a woman hemorrhaging after giving birth, but it has become a standard in most hospitals for all moms to receive this after giving birth, necessary or not. Contractions from Pitocin are usually much stronger and closer together, leaving a laboring mom to ask for medication if she originally wanted to avoid it and ask for more and more pain relief as the contractions progress. If you want to avoid this drug, the best way is to wait as long as safely possible to leave for the hospital. Fetal monitoring is so common it is used in almost all moms delivering in the hospital these days. If you request to have intermittent monitoring rather than continuous, you may be in for a battle with the staff and your doctor. The perception is by constantly monitoring your baby's heartbeat, they can determine if the baby is in distress and needs to be delivered immediately. The problem with this intervention is that acceptable levels of fluctuation of heart rate have not been established. Also, when you have contraction, the baby's heartbeat does lower. This is normal. According to one study, babies that were monitored constantly rather than intermittently were 63 to 314 percent more likely to have a C-section. In another very large study of over 34,000 women, it was found that the outcomes for babies who were continuously monitored were not better than those who were not. So why do they do it? Many researchers point to physician nervousness or liability concerns. You may be told that it is for the safety of your child. However, the studies do not show this. Finally, let's discuss cesarean sections, also known as C-sections. C-sections are serious medical surgeries. They absolutely save lives of moms and babies when they are needed. We are lucky to live in a country where there are such skilled doctors to perform these surgeries when emergencies call for them. There should be concerns, however, when such a serious surgery becomes commonplace. There is a higher level of risk to the baby and the mom when a C-section is performed. Risks to the mom include increased risk of infection, bleeding, damage to the bladder or bowel, and blood clots and death. 
While it is a very small number of women that die from C-sections, the risk is higher than with vaginal births. There are a list of problems babies face because of delivery by C-section, including breathing and breastfeeding problems, reactions to the anesthesia, and a premature baby due to an incorrect due date estimation. If the baby is premature, he or she may face a variety of problems, including lifelong problems. If your doctor suggests a C-section in the hospital and you are not planning on one, you may want to ask for a second opinion. You also will want to ask what the risks are if you choose to wait as they are often suggested for stalled labor. If you are fine and the baby is tolerating labor fine, there may be no reason to have a C-section. You may just not be progressing on the timeline they have set for laboring women. That is not how all women labor, however. Make sure you are educated. Ask questions. Find out what the risks and benefits are and be your own best advocate. Keep in mind if you have a C-section for your birth, many doctors do not encourage or even perform VBACs or vaginal births after a C-section for the next child, so you may be setting yourself up for multiple C-sections. There are many other interventions such as episiotomies, epidurals and spinal blocks, and IVs just for the sake of being in labor. IV bags and tubes contain phthalates, which have been linked to diseases and disorders. Some solutions contain aluminum or preservatives. This does not mean that something terrible is going to happen if you have to be on an IV. I had toxemia and had to be on IV medication to prevent me from having a seizure or dying while I was delivering. The benefit outweighed the risk for me personally in that situation. Knowing the exposure to certain chemicals may make you choose not to be exposed at all if you can avoid it, or perhaps you may wait a little longer to get the epidural. However, every pregnancy in every woman is different, and there are no definitive right or wrong answers. Be aware that newborns in the NICU on IVs are at a much higher risk for adverse effects due to the phthalate exposure because of their size and vulnerability. Also be aware that you will be hooked up to an IV as soon as you get an epidural or Pitocin. So the best thing to do is research before being faced with these decisions. Realize that there are emergencies that will necessitate use of these interventions. Maybe you know the risks and are okay with the decision to use these interventions. Maybe you will choose to use a midwife, doula, or give birth at a birthing center or at your home. I am simply encouraging you to be educated and make informed choices for the health of you and your baby. I have several resources on the products page that go into all of these options much more in detail to answer all of your questions and help make your own choice about what experience you want. Know that there will be standard procedures done to your newborn, such as eye cream, the hepatitis B shot, and vitamin K. The eye cream is an antibiotic used to prevent your baby from being blinded by gonorrhea. If you have been tested for gonorrhea and are negative, you may wonder why they administer it anyway. It is standard protocol, just as all of the newborn procedures are. They do not customize your baby's interventions according to the level of risk or lab results. You need to weigh the pros and cons and make the decision or it will be administered as a default. Vitamin K is not just a vitamin as you will probably be told, and all shots have the potential for side effects. Vitamin K is given to your baby within an hour or so of being born to prevent hemorrhaging in your newborn. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, the incident rate is 0.25 to 1.7% during the first week and an occurrence of 4.4 to 7.2 per 100,000 births from 2 to 12 weeks of age. Roche brand vitamin K ingredients, as written on their insert, include sodium hydroxide, which is also known as lye and is used in drain cleaner, and hydrochloric acid. Don't be blindsided by this right after giving birth. Ask to read the insert when you arrive at the hospital and look at the ingredients of the particular brand your child will be given as well as the possible side effects. Weigh this information, as well as the statistics on the possibility of hemorrhaging, and then make an educated decision. Research the pros and cons and make your own decision either way before ever going to the hospital so you will be prepared. It is a good habit to get into for the lifetime of your child. 
I have included some books and resources about fertility and delivery on our products page if you are interested in researching more about chemicals during this time. I do not address vaccines in this seminar. I do recommend that all parents make an informed choice and read about the diseases, the statistics, the benefits, and the risks of vaccinations, and the risks and benefits of not vaccinating. My goal is for all parents to make educated decisions, not to tell parents what those decisions should be.